Hi there, it is Jo from Minerva and today I have a little fabric focus video for you which is how to sew stretch velvet. If you've always loved the look of velvet but have heard that it's quite tricky to sew, you are right. But if you enter the world of stretch velvet, then you'll find the sewing is slightly easier and you will treat the fabric just as if it is a stretch fabric. There are a few little tips that I can give you along the way that will help you to deal with the pile and I'm going to share those now. I'm wearing Floral Resort, which is a Minerva exclusive stretch velvet. It's got a sort of dark background and the pattern is in bright colours and they give all the highlights to the fabric. It's got a crush velvet texture, a really subtle one, not um, a really strong one. And the nap on this fabric is going down the fabric, which makes it smooth to wear. And the pattern that I've chosen is actually a 1970s vintage pattern, but you can try any kind of short sleeve top. It's for stretch patterns, but sometimes you can use a woven pattern if you maybe change sizes or you know the pattern really well and you know how you can adapt it. The Minerva exclusive stretch velvet has a beautiful, luxurious feel. It's got 15% 15 stretch in the length and 60 in the width. And we'll have a look at that in a moment when we go to the cutting table. This one's called Rose Reverie. So it's got a slightly less variation in colour palette. It's got this sort of aquamarine grey, pale grey that creates the highlights and then the velvet background creates the low lights. On the back, the fabric is white. It's 92% polyester and 8% elastane. So the elastane is what gives it its stretch. So you might want to consider when you're choosing your pattern, whether you'll see the inside or not, because the inside will be white and that might be particularly noticeable on the darker fabric right side. So I'll give you a few pattern suggestions at the end, but let's take a look at how you cut it, treat it and sew with it. If you've not sewn with any stretch before, then maybe you could check out my videos, how to hem with uh, stretch knits, how to insert a stretch knit sleeve. Um, all of those things will be exactly the same as when you use the stretch velvet. So those key skills might get you on your way. Really, you, essentially, you need to treat this as a stretch fabric and not worry too much about the velvet, but we'll check out the things which are really, really important. If you're looking to sew your first knit project, then um, sewing a basic tee in this video is uh, really well broken down. So you can learn how to make a T-shirt from the Alison Glass Sew Essentials series. It's the knit pattern. It's got loads and loads of variation in it. It's got a dress, it's got a skirt, it's got a vest top wouldn't really know that from the front of the packet um, but it is a masterclass that whole pattern in making a stretch wardrobe and you could use stretch velvet for that too. You'll need to check the washing instructions on stretch velvet so they're not all treated the same. Um, our Minerva exclusive one washes at 30 degrees on the label and instructions but actually we washed it at 40 and tumble dried it and it was still fine. So if you're not sure, um, because you are not sure how your washing machine will perform, then you can cut a little piece out and give a little test wash to a piece before you cut and sew your project. I'm actually cutting some of this velvet out at the moment, so let's head over to the cutting table and I can talk you through some of the things that are slightly different about this stretch fabric, mostly the nap. I'm cutting out the Grayline Studio Scout Tee. It's one of those patterns that if a new cloth comes out, I like to try it. It's a really base pattern. Um, I know it fits. I can do some of the little hacks with this sort of tulip sleeve, different shaped hems, uh, split back. So I've used our stretch velvet, but I'm talking here about any stretch velvet that you can choose from our website. So there's crush velvet. Uh, in plain colours, there's velvets with sequins attached, there's burnt out stretch velvet. But with all of those stretch velvets, you need to make sure that you're cutting the direction of greatest stretch across the width of your body. So this means that even though this is for a woven pattern, I know this is going to fit because the stretch is going across the width. If you're making something in negative ease, so a fitted garment, then that is particularly important because you need that stretch 
to work with your body so that it clings back in again. Also, you need to make sure that the nap is running down. So when I rub this fabric, it's really smooth going down. When I go the other way, it's rough going up. And that's called the nap. And it's sort of nice to have that smooth, this going down your body, but also it does change the colour saturation a little bit. So if um, if you have one lot going down and one lot going up, one will appear slightly darker in colour to another. So look out for the nap. Look out for the direction of greatest stretch. In this case, with our pattern ones with the print on, you might want to think about pattern placement. So, for example, I didn't want this to be smack in the centre. I definitely didn't want to have two target points at the bust area. So I've just made sure that when I've cut that on the fold, I've got a really nice even distribution of print. The same for your other pieces. So on this pattern piece, the, the two arrows on a grain line mean that you can cut it this way on the fabric or this way on the fabric. So as long as the grain line is running straight, you can cut it either way, but you can't with velvet you would have to eliminate that top arrow and just use the arrows pointing in one direction. So you treat this fabric as a directional print, even if it didn't have a print on it, because you're working with the direction of the nap. If you're working with nap and direction, sometimes you might need to order more fabric because uh, you can't just put pieces in different places on your folded fabric. If you're using quite a thick jersey uh, velvet, then you might want to cut out in a single layer. On the exclusive fabric, this is called Celestial Motion. I cut it with the velvet sides together and pinned it well so that when I'm cutting, they don't grip on each other and make two inaccurate cuts because very soon your fabric can move away from the edge so use plenty of pins i've also done it so that i've got the white side facing that's the wrong side so if i need to put on any markings i can use um, a water soluble pen it's very tough to mark fabric on the right side when it's velvet because if you put chalk on it it sort of brushes off the pile if you put a, a pen colour on these dark inky colours, you won't really see it. So put your markings on the reverse or you can use tailor's tacks. When you're sewing stretch fabrics, you need to use quite a strong thread because your uh, stitch lines are going to be under some tension at some point, either when you put your clothes on, take them off or when you're moving around in them. So you need to use a, an all purpose thread, a Gutterman one, a good quality one that won't snap or break. Or if you can't use that in your machine because you don't have the options to change your zigzags, then you can use a Mariflex thread. And this is um, a Gutterman thread that is stretchy and you can use this on a straight stitch. And I'll show you that when we set up the machine. We're all cut out now, so it's time to look at our sewing machine and how we're going to sew this fabric. I've set up my arm for my camera so I can get a nice and close view. I can show you the machine settings and I can show you the stitches that I used. We recommend a ballpoint needle for stretch velvet, but you might easily find that a stretch needle is better for your machine. It's very depends on what machine you have. Mine prefers a stretch, but if you prefer a ballpoint uh, at this test stage is the time to find out. I've put a stretch needle in the uh, needle holder and I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. I'm going to make my zigzag stitch really narrow so if you have the ability to change your stitch width in very small increments that's really useful for sewing this fabric and I'm going to make the stitch length 2 but the stitch width only 0 0.5 that means I won't get a zigzag that goes like this I'll get a zigzag that's very, very narrow and almost mimics a straight stitch. And I'll show you why. Because this one has been sewn with a straight stitch. And when I put it under pressure, 
the seams will burst but on a zigzag stitch I can really pull it as tight as the last one but it doesn't break even though it's a zigzag it will still leave a good seam finish from the right side so you'll need to use a zigzag stitch, not a straight stitch, with a gutterman all-purpose thread. If you don't have the option to change your stitch widths in small increments, so if you have maybe a dial machine with a stitch selection and you've maybe got three zigzags you can choose from, a wide, a medium and a narrow, and the narrow one is making a seam that sort of pulls open too much on the right side, then you can use a Maraflex thread. So I've put a Maraflex thread in the top of my machine and in the bobbin as well. I mark these bobbins with a Sharpie to remind me that that's Maraflex thread on there. And now I can sew on a straight stitch. But my seam is still stretchy and strong. I've got a white one there, so I'm probably going to see it through the front. Oh no, not too bad. But you'll be wanting to use a darker thread. Maraflex thread is really, really strong and it means you still get a stretchy seam. So you need to think about your combination of thread and needle and stitch selection. The other thing you might want to consider is your foot. So I've taken off my regular foot and I've put on a walking foot and that reduces some of that creeping that we were talking about when we were cutting out. So if you just use your normal foot, you might find that your seams start to run away from each other. You can also try a roller foot um, or whatever at the test stage makes the best seam on your machine. There's no reason why you would need an overlocker to sew this fabric because it doesn't fray and you can leave the seams unfinished. But um, if you want to sew on an overlocker for speed, then that goes through the machine really easily. So you put your uh, edges together, use your guide to decide on your seam allowance depending on your pattern. Make sure that you're keeping the seam allowance and you're not switching from, say, a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance allowed on the pattern and then on here you sew the raw edges together and you're only using six mil that means every seam will be uh, a centimeter and just under bigger than um, what's allowed for so you will change the size of your top I've got my diff feed on one but you might want to change that if it's pulling or creeping your fabric I've got it on a uh, stitch width five and stitch length three. I'm getting a nice overlocked edge and my seam is nice and secure. You might want to do that if you have a seam on the underarm and you don't want the two layers to be rubbing under your arm, it just keeps the seam allowances together. I'm going to put together that scout tee uh, so you can see some of the different techniques. It will be a bit of a mix up on the inside. I'm going to use lots of different techniques on one garment, but it's a sample piece so that you can see some different ways to sew stretch velvet. Now that I know my machine setup, so I've got my stitch length correct and my thread all ready, I'm going to sew up the shoulders of my scout tee and then I'm going to take a look at putting on the neckband. I've sewn along the shoulder seams and I've also put a piece of clear tape across the shoulders in the seam allowance. So that's a piece of really narrow stretchy elastic but you can put a little bit of any elastic in there and that will stop the shoulders from stretching out because there you're, you've cut across the 60% stretch of the fabric. So if you put a big sleeve on there, say... Um, Ooh, the, the balloon sleeve off the billy sweatshirt then you might sort of pull that down or if you're using this uh, stretch velvet because you're putting quite a big sort of cowl neck on something or something that has a crossover front where you've got a little bit of weight hanging from the shoulder then if you stabilize it 
then you keep that shoulder seam on your shoulder and it won't pull off the end. Next up, we're going to put a, a neck binding on and you can cut a neck binding from your fabric. Just remember, you need it to your uh, neck band strip to be on the dogs, the direction of greatest stretch. If you cut it the other way, it will pull your neck and it will give you wrinkles all the way around here. If you're struggling to get a neckband onto something with uh, velvet because you're getting a little bit of creeping and it's not quite lining up, then you can use a, a stretch bias binding. This one's a, a t-shirt one, but I've listed a stretch bias binding in the products below. That neck's on, all nice and clean and tidy, and now we can put in the sleeves and we can stretch those to fit this arm side we've got two notches there and one notch there so that we can definitely get the right sleeve in the right side sleeves are in I've had a go with the overlocker there and that's made the seam nice and slim under my arm next we're going to sew down the side seams and then we can hem our scout tee. Okay, so on the hem, I did an overlock and a straight stitch top stitch. If you don't have an overlocker, you can do a zigzag stitch around the sleeve. It looks quite, really quite nice on the outside. You just get that little zigzag. And also, if you've got a larger bicep, um, that zigzag stitch just make the sleeve uh, very nice and stretchy. You don't need to finish the edges, you can um, just leave them open, they won't fray. You can keep your seam allowances open where you intersect a, a, another seam. You can press it if you want, but really from the right side it's really flat anyway because the polyester sort of just falls open on a seam. Well, you've seen it all from the inside. And this is the top from the outside. If you found it a bit frustrating that I've just been clicking my way through this project, you can check out my uh, video over on Minerva for how to sew the Scout Tee if you want more details. Today, I just wanted to show you all the different techniques that you could use for sewing stretch velvet. Here's the top. I've got that nice bit of extra sort of give on the sleeve. It's got a slightly uh, shorter front than back. I haven't pressed these seams open, but we can have a look at pressing in a moment. Because of the polyester and the sort of loose feel, then I probably would like to press around the neck there. Look, I'm just getting a little bit of rippling and I can add some heat to that binding on the inside. Let's take a look how to press the fabric. If you press this from the right side, you do change the velvet. So you take some of the velvet crush out and you'll just get a really smooth velvet. If you press from the wrong side on too hot an iron, you will melt it a little bit. So I could just feel that sticking and it's just starting to melt there. I took it off quite quickly so I didn't get it stuck to my iron. So you really do need to turn your iron down uh, to synthetics. If you've got a fabric that a stretch fabric that is um, got a deeper pile on than this, so maybe sometimes on a burnt out velvet where some of the pattern is quite a high pile and the rest of the fabric is quite a low pile, then you can use a piece of your cloth and use it as a self press cloth. So, for example, if I want to press my hem, I can now press it so that this velvet is touching this velvet and it will keep the uh, pile from getting squashed flat. 
if you think your iron is still too aggressive then you can add a press cloth on top of that my iron is very sensitive to the temperatures that i choose so i'm okay with that but that little bit of cloth underneath is stopping my pile from um looking different in the different places so all of that fabric looks the same it doesn't have a squashed flat edge so now my hem is pressed flat i haven't lost any of the crush you can see perhaps on that purple bit there the crush has remained the same texture whether it's here or here or indeed up here where I haven't had the iron at all. On this neck line I'm getting a little bit of rippling so I'm going to use a ham. And press from the wrong side. Try and press, try not to drag. But remember, you've got an 8% elastane content in here or whatever your content is for your fabric. So you don't want to melt the synthetic fibres in your fabric. If you're getting more rippling than that, you may have your neck binding a little bit too tight. But I have uh, managed to get that a little bit flatter. So turn down your iron to synthetics, use a self velvet press cloth if that helps to avoid squashing your pile. And actually on lots of stretch velvets, especially the ones with synthetic fibres, you don't need to press them so much anyway. After you finish your project there's one final thing you might like to do after you've been using stretch velvet or indeed woven velvet which is to take the foot plate off your machine and give it inside a little clean because you will have collected quite a lot of that fuzzy pile in the bobbin case so i'm going to um, take out the bobbin and the bobbin case and just give everything a little brush to get all the fluffy bits out of the machine And you see all of these bits and they're the sort of thing that will jam up your bobbin next time you're using your machine. I hope those tips have shown you that if you just want a little bit of velvet in your wardrobe if you buy a stretch velvet you get all the look of the velvet but it's a much easier so. I have a pattern pairing video out with um, Minerva exclusive fabrics so I've got the 10 uh, prints that I've got here matched up with some patterns but I couldn't really leave you today without giving you a little bit of inspiration for sewing up this uh, stretchy velvet. The first one is a top. The 6838 is a long sleeve top with a sort of flowing wrap front so um, from today's video I was saying about stabilising the shoulders which you might want to do if you use this pattern. It's a nice sort of autumn winter transitional piece you can wear it with a jacket on top or you can wear it long sleeve to keep you cozy if you're looking for something super versatile then birda 6540 is a pattern which is a little t-shirt top and you can also extend it into a dress and i think this dress would be great for layering as well so you could wear a long sleeve very negative ease t-shirt underneath thick tights, boots, and you could really wear that for winter and get that velvety look. Or you can just make the little top a little bit like what I've got on today, but it's super easy because this is just a little grown on sleeve. If you're looking for some luxe trousers or you like to wear trousers, then this fabric is brilliant because you can get lots of different trouser styles from it. So because it's got a stretch, you can make trousers with negative ease like leggings and yoga wear and that kind of thing. Or you can have wide leg trousers or anything that has a gather or elastic because the fabric gathers up and makes a really good gather. You will have seen on that top I wore earlier the neck gather was really neat. Um, you can't do that with cotton velvet, you would end up with a really bulky waist. 
So this is Simplicity 8134. It's a wide leg trouser pattern, elasticated waist, really, really simple. You can add it up a notch by making the wrap that goes around with the tie on. Um, I've also made the kilo wrap dress um, as a jumpsuit in this fabric because uh, it's got that lovely sort of movement when you get any kind of wrap on it or any sort of overlapping or um, ruching of the fabric. You really do enhance the uh, textures in the crush velvet. So this is a superb trouser pattern for making some wide leg trousers. If you wanted the negative ease trousers, then look no further than the Jarly leggings pattern. It's got quite a high waistband around the waist. And I use these patterns um, very rarely, but actually when I do make them, they're always fantastic. There are 27 different sizes on here, so you can make them for teens right through to adults and all the sizes in between. And there are great instructions in these patterns. If you're looking to wear velvet, then I guess it's sort of coming into autumn, winter in the UK or uh, summer in the uh, southern hemisphere where you're wanting to just layer up or have something on your arms. So I've picked the Stylark Sunny Top. It's a top um, with a very loose fitting shoulder. So those shoulders will go right down. So again, you might want to stabilise that shoulder seam. It's got a cut along the front so you can... Um, actually mix up some of other fabrics with it so you could use some leftovers of your print velvet with any kind of plain crush velvet. Let's take a look at some dress patterns. This is Vogue 9264. It's a real 70s inspired long line dress. You can make it short as well. It's got panels in it so you can really get some fitting there but of course with your stretch velvet you'll be getting quite a close fit anyway. Um, you can wear it right down to the floor, you can wear it ankle skimming, or you can wear it short. It's got that sort of high neck, um, a slim fitting sleeve, and all that throughout that dress, you won't be seeing the insides. So you'll be able to keep all of that gorgeous velvet on the right side. I think you could make this an evening dress, or I think you could make it a day dress too. If you prefer a shorter dress style, then uh, Butterick 6054 is a lovely pattern it's it's got that sort of little bit of ruching that I talked about which re really you get the uh, that lovely texture from the velvet when you do that so um, if you don't want a fully body skimming uh, dress or you're not body confident enough to wear that sort of completely body hugging shape then this just has a little bit of ruching around the front and I think uh, lots of people would like that it's got a tie it's got short sleeves and it's sort of essentially a wrap dress this fabric would be perfect for many wrap dresses, so do check those out on our website. My final dress selection is um, another stretch dress. So this one is in negative ease. So if you're choosing a fabric from our range, this one's called Bubble Shoal, then you'll be getting a body skimming dress, um, really elegant with that sort of high neck on, long sleeve, short sleeve, really long to the floor with a split up the side. Um, I think that would be a really good choice for any stretch velvet, this one or any sort of burnt out velvet, ribbed um, velvet jersey. They would all be perfect for this pattern. OK, so I have shown you today how to cut out stretch velvet, how to set up your machine, how to sew it. Um, a few different techniques that you can try out. I've shown you like the, sh the shoulder stabilisation and a few hemming tips. So um, hopefully you can go and choose this. You've got some pattern inspiration there to go at. And don't forget to check out Stretch Velvet on our website using the hashtag because you'll be able to find lots and lots of different people who have sewn up this type of fabric. They'll be able to give you some tips and you'll also see what pattern they chose. We would love to see what you're going to choose with this fabric. So share your makes over at Minerva, make a free account, um, show us what you've made, give us a little description and we can check out your fabric and pattern pairing. You can also join the craft club over there where you will receive a discount and offers throughout the year. All the patterns and the fabrics that I've mentioned are listed below, either on the Minerva YouTube blurb below the video or here on our Minerva feed. Um, where they will be listed underneath. Thank you very much for watching. Do come back for more sewing inspiration, sew alongs, uh, learn to sew videos, pattern pairing and fabric matching and any of our new releases. See you soon.